So this is a comparison of the HT Instruments Neptune insulation multimeter against the Fluke 1587 FC insulation multimeter. Now I've chosen to compare the Neptune to the Fluke because you can get both of these in a maintenance pack format, which is how I originally bought the Neptune. So to go through the two packs, for HD instruments, you get the Neptune instrument itself. That comes in its own little case here. Along with that, you get a set of crocodile clips, and a set of leads, and you then get this uh, Rogowski style coil uh, current clamp adapter to work with the instrument here. And that comes in its own separate little pack. So although it is a, a maintenance pack. It comes as the two separate items boxed together, I guess is the best way to describe it. In contrast with the fluke over here, obviously you've got the insulation tester itself. You know, with regard to accessories for the fluke, you get here the two probes, um, crocodile clips, and these go on to standard four millimeter leads. Uh, you also get a pro remote probe for use with the instrument in insulation test mode and you get a thermocouple for this instrument as well. With the maintenance pack you get uh, a couple of items extra and you can buy them in three versions of the pack. Um, one pack comes with this uh, current clamp. This is actually the Chaminon new version. Um, you do get the i400 if you buy the Fluke but I don't have the i400 but the concept of the clamp is exactly the same. And then you get a phase rotation meter sitting here at the back with the uh, third pack and that includes the current clamp as well. With Fluke on the right there you get the hard case that caters for all the elements of the kit all in one standard case. Whereas with the HD instruments it, it is split up. So in terms of quality wise I believe these leads are PVC. I don't think they're silicon. They're not as soft as flexible as the leads that come with the fluke. Um, the probes on these are moulded to the lead. So the only way to get other accessories onto them is to remove the shrouds. And then you can plug in another accessory. Um, like that. Um, it's not my favourite way of doing it because then you've got the weight of the probe. Um, I much prefer the format offered by Fluke with the leads that plug direct into the accessories. Um, that's just my personal preference. What I have found with these leads, as you can see, this is spinning around. Um, and these 4mm adapter springs are actually screw on. You can actually take them off completely. Um, the problem with them being is that they tend to come loose whilst you're in use. Um, so again, that's not my favourite approach really. Uh, and now we've put the shroud somewhere. Um, okay, oh, there it is. Uh, crock clip wise, they're about the same size physically. Um, slightly larger on the HD Instruments unit, but it's nothing noticeable in practice if you like. So both sets are more than adequate. Probe tip wise, uh, the flukes and HGS both have a shroud, they're a similar sort of size shroud, it stops you gaining access into the smaller terminals. Um, so kind of SAK6 and above you're okay with, uh, but the, the smaller ones you'll struggle to get in, you have to remove the shroud, which you can do for both of these. I oh, think it's quite tight. Uh, again, you've got a four millimeter kind of accessory uh, on the fluke as well. And then obviously you already see me take that one out. Um, okay, so functionality wise, we'll chuck all the leads out of the way. And we'll even chuck him on the floor. So, with regard to instrument functionality, you have um, AC and DC volts on the Fluke split across two separate functions. On the Neptune, it's a common function and you switch them electronically. Uh, on the AC, you also have a low input impedance function for ghost voltages. Um, on this one, it's also a separate function uh, from the AC-DC voltage function. 
with the fluke you also come around here and you have millivolts along with a temperature function. You don't have any millivolts on the HT Neptune and you don't have a temperature function either. Um, and then moving around, so if we'll go back this way, on the Neptune you do have phase rotation which are, is built into the instrument. Obviously on the fluke you can only get phase rotation by buying the maintenance pack or buying the phase rotation meter separately. It's not built into the instrument on this. Um, with regard to voltage as well, you also have the ability to display harmonics on this instrument that the fluke doesn't have. You have the ability to have a min max and a peak. You have min max on fluke but no peak function. Uh, both the instruments have a hold and that's pretty much it voltage wise. Okay, let's flip round to for DC resistance. So you've got DC resistance on fluke here. It's just a standard resistance range with the HT instruments. You have the standard DC resistance range, although its range is quite a bit lower than the fluke. Um, you also have a 200 milliamp continuity function for measuring earth bonding and I also use it for windings, motor windings. And on the Ohm's function you also have a capacitance function on the fluke. You don't have capacitance function on this HG Neptunes, just something that I kind of didn't realise until I started comparing it to the other instruments. That's a little bit of a glaring omission by HG instruments really. Um, generally industrial electricians and even white goods electricians a capacitance function is quite useful to have and this instrument's lacking in that department. Um, you also have next one round on fluke is continuity and diode test. Uh, you don't really have continuity on this, it's just built into the Ohm's function here. You also don't have a diode test either, um, but I wouldn't place the diode tests quite as important as a capacitance function. Um, it is useful if you work on DC charges and UPSs, uh, but it's, it's not quite as essential, but the fluke does have it. Um, okay, and then we shift around to current AC-DC, which is purely milliamps for the fluke. In order to get an amperage reading, you need a current clamp, separate current clamp, and this current clamp uh, especially the I-400 that works with the Fluke uh, is a direct current transformer. It's 200 amp to 0 0.2 amps for the Fluke. It's be 400 amps to 0 0.4 amps. So it plugs in to the milliamp function and then you just have to multiply by the ratio to get the actual amperage value. If you wanted to measure DC current, you would have to flip this back to millivolts and use a current clamp for that kind of facility. In contrast, for HG instruments, you have um, a current clamp mode. So the current clamp plugs into the same jacks here, and you can use either a Rogowski coil or can use a standard millivolt clamp there, AC DC, or standard just AC Rogowski coil. And you can then set the ratio up here, um, and then 300 amps, you've got some ones to select. So if you switch it to a different one, you get a different set of ratios for the DC clamp there. And once you've done all that, you will then get a direct reading on the screen of the current that's being measured. You also have the ability to go back when you switch the instrument on to reset this into a, a more variable ratio setting on the display but it's a little bit more awkward to set it up but it is there available for you should you desire it. Um, and then finally also with the current mode you can also measure the harmonics. Again you have no functionality whatsoever with regard to that on the fluke. Uh, the final one is in round is insulation testing which is in the mega ohms on the Neptune 50 to 1000 volts same with this instrument, 50 to 1000 volts. So on the fluke you have PI and DAR test capability on here for use of this button here. 
you also have that on HT Neptunes uh, by use of this one here, uh, Timer, Pi and Da. Uh, so the one major factor that we've not discussed here with the Fluke is Fluke Connect and the Bluetooth connection to record results, either an installation test or voltage monitoring uh, or current monitoring, whichever one you want to do. The HT Neptunes doesn't have any of that facility whatsoever. So any results you want from this, you have to record manually on a good old paper and pen. Um, so if you're more into the electronic report side, you'll get a significant advantage with the Fluke here. So build quality wise, uh, the units are fairly similar in my mind. Um, the fundamental difference is that this is one complete unit for the Neptune here. The rubber moulding is moulded, glued onto the the actual plastic casing. You gain access to the battery pack here, which is four AAA cells. Um, just a single like penny slot screwdriver there takes this away. You have uh, probe holders here on the back, and you have the little slot here for a Velcro loop or something of that nature to hang the meter from. Um, rotary switch is quite nice, pretty good indent to it. Um, pretty good operation from the buttons, they all feel good. No real uh, major concerns with the build of the unit, really. Um, fluke wise, this is a little bit different in that the actual meter is housed within this rubber boot. Um, again, you've got the penny slot screwdriver to take the battery compartment off, and this time it's for AAs, so bigger battery probably uh, last longer than the HT instruments would, but you do have to remove this rubber boot in order to get to the battery compartment. Um, again, your uh, probe holders built into the rubber moulding and a slot. The uh, flute do their own T-pack system to actually hang an instrument from with a magnet or a Velcro loop. Um, I don't think HT actually offer their own, uh, but I'm not seeing anything. Um, and again for this, um, the perhaps a little bit freer movement on the function switch in comparison to the HD instruments. Uh, buttons have a some, perhaps a softer feel. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a softer feel to the Fluke, I guess, overall. Perhaps just that, that slightly higher quality to it, but both units are, are pretty respectable in that uh, matter. Finally, input jacks. Uh, obviously, this is not one of my favourite aspects of the Fluke. You have the common terminal for the voltage ohms and resistance up there. Current will also go to the common terminal. Insulation resistance is done through special input jack here and the milliamp, positive milliamp, which just doesn't make sense to me. Um, in contrast, HG instruments, all the connections are made via just the two jacks there, which makes for easier use of the instrument, in my opinion. I'll just turn the lights off and then we can get an idea of the backlights, uh, hopefully. That's the uh, Luke backlight. Uh, oh, that's not the backlight, I've got no battery. Um, okay. Uh, that's the HT Neptune's backlight on there. I'll see if I can find a uh, picture of the Fluke with its backlight on. It's, uh, it's nowhere near as good or as nice. Screen is slightly larger display, um, but uh, there's not an awful lot of difference between the two. It's slightly narrow on the HT Neptunes, and that's due to you. you can see the physical size of the two instruments compared to one another. Um, quite a bit smaller with the Neptune in there, uh, if you prefer that kind of thing. So, with regard to the performance test that I did on it, um, the results for measuring voltage. AC and DC and measuring current AC only I tested. Uh, the results are pretty comparable across the two instruments, not an awful lot to pick between them. Uh, with the resistance function, the, the fluke was, was slightly better test results on, on the winding simulator that I use. Um, but again, not a vast amount that you worry about in terms of practicality. Um, where the Neptune started to suffer, definitely on testing the output of a current transducer, and the 4 to 20 milliamp, you only have the 
ability to measure that with DC volts um, and it just doesn't have the required resolution and accuracy to give a comparable reading using the milliamp function on the fluke or in fact using the millivolt function uh, and a load resistor in the same manner the fluke when hands down much much better for that kind of testing um, for the insulation resistance testing um, this struggled with some of the stability tests uh, one milliamp current test that was quite a way out uh, in comparison to the, the fluke there um, I'll stick the table up of the overall results um, and you can see them for yourself and if we take a look down at the bottom, the overall accuracy figure, the Fluke was twice as accurate as the HT Neptune. So the Fluke tends to win in that department as well. Okay, so on paper, the Fluke does tend to outperform the little HT Neptune unit here quite significantly. However, that does come at a price. Um, standard instrument wise, so if you can buy these two instruments just on their own, a recommended retail price um, in the UK, uh, including tax, is around about 750 quid for the fluke here and for the HT instruments, it's around about 450 quid. Um, so that's 300 pounds saving. Now, instruments on their own, I've seen this for quite significantly lower prices, and you can pick this up for around about the 550 pound mark in the UK just as the instrument on its own. So it makes it a bit more palatable in that sense. However, if you want to go down the kit route, then the only kit on offer with the HT Neptune is with one of its current clamps. That retails for around about £480. For the Fluke, the kit that comes with the current clamp, that's £770 in the UK. If you add the phase rotation meter into it, the equation, that comes out as £990. So it's way, way, way significantly more than the HT Neptune here. Now whilst I've seen the meter on offer, um, I have never seen any of the kits with any substantial offer to them. The kits aren't stocked as widely, there's just the meter on its own. So if you want to go down the fluke kit route, you can pretty much guarantee, certainly in the UK, you're going to be much, much closer to recommended retail price. Uh, now obviously, if you do go down that route and you add in the Fluke um, motor and phase rotation indicator, you'll get phase rotation, which you can get on the instrument, on the HT instruments itself. Um, you also add in an actual motor rotation. This can be held against the side of the motor and indicate the rotation without any direct contact to it. You don't have that facility on the HT Neptunes there. Um, as I say, that comes at a price. As with all these things, it depends on what you want from instrumentation as to which one you would actually go for. For me personally, I would go for the Fluke on this occasion. Um, it does give you quite a bit of benefit with regard to measuring transducer outputs, which is what I do as an industrial electrician. And you also have in there the capacitance function as well that the Neptune is missing. Harmonics on this are nice, um, but I don't tend to use that facility as much as I would use uh, a milliamp function for measuring transducers. So for me, I think probably the Fluke would be the better instrument. Uh, with regard to this Neptune, uh, the manufacturer obviously they could improve this unit if they added in capacitance and a diode test function that would make it more comparable to this unit and if they pushed up the resolution on the DC voltage and the accuracy that can make it possibly viable to measure current transducer output with a load resistor and then that you this unit would become much much more comparable to the fluke unit in my opinion okay there you have it that's the results of the HT Neptune against the Fluke 1587 FC. Hope you found the comparison useful and I'll see you again in another video.